jump to uh, top of 10. Peace on the end again. And yeah, don't take your window so quickly again. Real simple.
so glad to see you here this morning. That's how we plan. It's like, what, are you doing? what are you doing? Which one are you doing? Which yeah. announcement? Well, Happy Mother's Happy Day. Mother's that was Day. the first one. That's right. Right. We are so glad to have the, the ladies here this morning. And whether you're a mom or grandma or just a, a, a female influence in people's life, we want to say thank you. Uh, there's a lot of ways we can do it this morning. Hopefully you got some candy coming in the doors. And that was one of the ways with a cool card. And then another is we actually have a photo booth set up down in the shared narthex. So if you want, you can take your family or yourself or whoever with you, some friends, head on down there and they will take the picture for you. They actually have a, they'll have a photographer down there. They'll take your picture and you can celebrate this special day. Yeah, it's a very cool setup. We also want to let you know that we have been gone uh, the time that you normally announce your pastors for the coming year. Last week was um, so there's pastor, a net called the pastor announcement Sunday we and one of us was on vacation. The other was not child, I exactly. Yeah. So we have to announce this week who your pastors are going to be effective July 1st. And by the way, it's us again. So you're stuck with us. Uh, uh, they, they it's know it's what almost do. like you were ready for us ready. to do that. And it's not even on the announcements. I was expecting something in a minor key. But. So yes, you're stuck with us for another year. Uh, <laughs> next announcement, next week is graduation Sunday. So we're going to encourage you to be here to celebrate our graduates and lift them up all morning long. So they'll be in all three services, just like you sort of were for confirmation class, which you, if you were here about a month ago, we did that. So we have our graduates. If you have a student, um, grandchild, anybody who's graduating from high school, college, technical school, anything like that, make sure they get in contact with the church and we'll make sure that they get honored on that day. So get that information to us. That's right. And just a reminder, uh, we have Jack, Pastor Jack. You all remember Jack. He's not been retired that long. You know, he, he preached around. last week. He did preach last yes. week. Thank you for covering Jack. Appreciate that. Um, he is teaching a new class starting on May 11th and he's talking about denominational differences, riveting stuff. It's really good class. Um, if you're very curious of why it's great being Methodist or why you're interested, hey, well, what, how do other denominations feel on different topics and subjects and theology and all that? He just loves teaching this class. It's almost like his world religions. It's actually a college level program he teaches. So if you're interested, sign on up. It starts on the 11th. And with that, let's worship together. All right. <laughs>
please remain standing and join me as we affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Can anything be more powerful than that, standing in the blood of Jesus Christ? Amen. I'm Sally Berthy, and I'm happy to greet you this morning. It's a blessing for me to serve as a Stephen minister and to have the privilege of guiding our prayer time this morning. If you need a time of private prayer after the service today, please stop any of us who have on a blue name tag, and we'll be happy to find a quiet place to pray with you. If you have a, a deeper need and you would like a Stephen minister to walk with you over a period of time, please call the church office and leave that request on the Stephen ministry extension or check in at the website and a Stephen leader will get back to you. We give thanks this morning for our faithful quilters who have prepared these quilts for the recipients, and we just ask you to stop by down in the narthex, tie a double knot, and say a prayer for these folks who need our loving support. We have a praise. There's no one from our church family in the hospital that we know of, and so we give thanks to the Lord for that. We do surround with loving sympathy um, the families of these who have recently passed away, and we pray God's loving support on their families. Would you please join me now as we bow our hearts before God's throne of grace in prayer? Almighty God, we gather to praise and worship you in the splendor of your holiness. For you alone are the most high God, our creator, our redeemer, and our indwelling sustainer. Your holiness reminds us of our sinfulness, and we bring to you now any unconfessed sin. Thank you for your forgiveness through the shed blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We rejoice with families where love for you binds them together. We thank you for our mothers whose love and example have been a guide for us. We pray for your tender healing on those whose mothers have died or have lost children, and for those who did not know you and may have been hurtful or harmful. We ask that you touch them with your love. Lord, teach us to be your people. Help us to give up pretense, to drop our masks, and walk humbly with you. Grow in us servant hearts, willing to do what you call us to do. Forgive our trying to be in control. Help us, Lord, to stop getting ahead of you, but rather to be still and wait on you, seeking your wisdom, strength, and guidance in order to be your presence with those whose lives touch ours. Because of your Holy Spirit living in us and empowering us, you can use us, as frail as we are, to be your salt and light in your world. Thank you. Almighty God, we ask your hand of healing, strength, and courage on those suffering the terror of war in the Ukraine, those digging out from natural disasters, and those touched by crime and violence. May your tender healing touch be on those in grief or struggling with physical or mental illness. We thank you that you love and draw near to all who call on your name. Lord, give our pastors, Richard, Jeremy, Casey, and Jack, the strength and stamina that they need to shepherd this Anona flock. And do the same for pastors and missionaries around the world. May they stand firm on the truth of your word. Come, Holy Spirit, draw us together as we join our hearts in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. all sing pretty good. <laughs> what is May 27th? Anybody know? Friday? What? Graduation day, but it's also for us Teacher Appreciation Day because it's the end of the school year, and I want to lift up a few people that have been teachers to me. Um, one is Sally Murthy, who just did our prayer. She was my Sunday school teacher when I was a wee little one two years ago. Two years ago, actually when I was growing up here in the church, right, so as I grew up here in my young, young years, elementary age, she was my Sunday school teacher. Jacqueline Weisgerber um, has been a wonderful teacher to me and a partner in ministry for many years. Um, I don't know if his story for me with her was in seminary, I would come back um, about every other week to visit my family because I'd moved them down early, and Jacqueline would be on the phone with me for those drives as I was coming back from Atlanta. And we're talking 10 o'clock till about 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> or 4, right, until by the time I got in. Because I was leaving literally from seminary about 5 o'clock in, in the afternoon, trying to get out of Atlanta traffic to drive down here. And she was just on the journey with me, making sure that I was safe and staying awake for that journey. And in the midst of that, we ended up doing trips to Israel together in moments that had been very special. So two very important teachers in my life. Um, and I'm sure that you can reflect on and think of the teachers in your life. And so I want to encourage two things as that date approaches, May 27th, because there's two things you can do. One, you can volunteer to help on that day. You can be present to be able to celebrate those teachers that are pouring into the next generation out of thanks for the people that poured into you. That's one. Two, and I will not send you an email regarding this, we are collecting gift cards here at the church. All right, so you're not going to get an email from me because I don't want any confusion over that because sometimes people spam my email type thing and you get information from me that's not from me. Um, but I will say it here publicly that we are collecting gift cards for those teachers. So if you would be so generous, just reach out to Jackie Evans, our missions director. She can help you out with the way to be able to contribute, bring it by the church, drop those off, and then for that teacher appreciation breakfast, we'll be distributing them out to the teachers to say thank you for all that they have done. And quite frankly, um, it has been, as you know, a very tough time for them coming through COVID, moving from remote now to back to in-person. I just saw an article the other day of uh, the remote was an utter failure um, for the most part. It was a struggle, which means those teachers are struggling even more now. Um, so they're, they're struggling to try and get those kids up to speed because of the struggles of COVID and teaching remotely previously. Let's pray over our offering in our hearts of generosity. Shall we pray? God, for each one of us, um, I would just hope that you would put in our mind's eye someone that has just been a gift to us, someone that has taught us something along our life's journey that uh, helped us become a better person to become better and more like you. And Lord, we lift up those people that come to mind, whether they're still with us or they now reside with you. We'd ask God that you bless this offering in that May 27th day 
as we celebrate the teachers of this generation. Help us to be a church that continues to support those who raise up our kids and our grandkids and our great-grandkids and bless this offering that it might help us to do that all the more. We pray this and we pray it in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and we all say, amen.
Amen. First, I want to say thank you, Praise Choir. It is so great having you back with us in worship. Weren't they awesome this morning? So thankful to have them. Thank you, guys. And happy Mother's Day again. Hopefully you had a great start to Mother's Day and have a great afternoon planned. You get your candy, get your pictures taken. For our family, we typically celebrate Mother's Day on Saturday because Sunday is kind of a busy day for us. So, um, so we celebrate on Saturday. So I took my wife and my mom and the family went out to dinner to their favorite restaurant. And very important, we celebrated with Kim's favorite dessert, she now has this chocolate cake from a restaurant called Portillo's. It was built down in St. Petersburg, down by the mall there. And they have this chocolate cake there. Uh, we had it about a month ago. And she told me after eating a slice of this cake, she said, now every holiday for our family, this is the cake we will celebrate that holiday with. <laughs> Birthdays, anniversaries, Arbor Day, 4th of July, it doesn't matter what the holiday is. It will be that chocolate cake. So... I got that chocolate. In fact, I, you know, I was kind of thinking, she's, she's so enamored with this chocolate cake, you know. You know that age-old question where they say, uh, if you're tr stranded on a desert island, you know, who are the three people that you would want most with you? And of course, for Kim, it would be her children. Our children is very important, you know, to have her kids. And of course, we'd have the, the dogs, you know, the dogs are a big part of our life. And I think the third person would be this chocolate cake. <laughs> and I, I've fallen now to somewhere in the top five, I think, so... But a great chance to celebrate and remember. And I was thinking back as we're talking about our series today, continuing on The Walk with uh, Adam Hamilton, talking about essential practices of the Christian life. Today we're talking about study. Yeah, that's the reaction I was kind of expecting there. You know, but here's, I was thinking about studying. I was thinking about me growing up and mom's day and my mom, you know, and as I remember growing up, it was important to my mom and my dad that I would study, you know, I would, they wanted, as, as parents, we wanted, our, they wanted the kids to work hard, right, to study, to learn, to make sure you wear clean clothes every day, um, you know, to get good grades, to all these important things. And now me as a parent, I'm seeing the same thing with my kid, you know, study, work hard, wear those clean clothes, um, you know, all those kind of things. But I got to ask you a question. Feel free, if you're willing to raise a hand, how many people just love to study? How many people just love it so much, they will open up a book and they will write papers and they will just study to death and they will read and they will examine and they will write. And okay, there's a few of you, I, I kind of, yeah, okay. How many of you would rather do your taxes by hand outdoors in the middle of a hurricane than study? Uh, okay. Oh, come on. Yeah, thank you. Ah, get some honest people in here. All uh, right, that's kind of me too. I got to confess, studying is not something that's high on my list of, ooh, I get to. And it's hard, you know. Um, studying is something that is a part of our life. In fact, if you were to Google, I always like starting with an easy definition. If you were to Google study, you would get a very simple definition. It says this, study is the devotion of time and attention to acquiring knowledge on an academic subject, especially by means of books, okay? A very academic answer, very succinct, you know, but there's two key words I want you to remember in this, right? As you're looking at that, remember the words devotion and attention. Devotion and attention. So hang on to those two words. So talking about studies, I was remember growing up in high school, uh, I lived in Central Florida and our family was growing up there. I loved music. Music was just a part of my life. I was heavily involved in music. Uh, in fact, my senior year in high school, half of my classes were choir classes. I loved it. It was the best senior year ever, but I struggled with math. Math was not a subject. Any of y'all struggle with? Okay. If you, I know my daughter, it's, I think it's genetic because my daughter is struggling with math now in her schools. And I was like, yeah, I, I've been there. And so I kind of struggled through, did the best I could of math, but I love my music classes. And a buddy of mine, his name was Corey. We were graduating high school and were accepted at the University of Central Florida in their school of music. And I was excited. We're going to be singers. We're going to study music and this is going to be great. And so we go off to college there that freshman year. And I'll never forget first week, freshman classes, you know, and you have all these different classes and music. You've got choir classes, you've got ensemble classes, music history, ear training, sight singing, you know, all these different subjects you study. Well, one of the subjects is called music theory. Music theory. And if you were to kind of summarize what music theory is, it's a combination of music and math. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't quite ready for that. I came from a performing arts school, and we focused on performance, on the singing and the learning of the music. We didn't learn much on theory. 
And so I'll never forget my first week of classes. I'm sitting there with professors, about 55 of us in this class, and me and my buddy Corey are there. And the professor says, you know, you guys are all from different walks of life and different experiences, but we need to know that you have the basic understanding of theory before we start this class because there's some basic understandings you need to know to take this course, a 101, you know, first course. And so he said, I'm going to give you an exam today and to see what you know about music theory. And so my friend Corey and I took the exam, and out of 55 plus students, he and I were the two lowest grades in the class. I kid you not, I'm so embarrassed by my score, I won't tell you the number, but if I were to compare my score to a temperature in Florida, mine was a pretty cold day in January. Okay, and my friend Corey was even worse. He was like record freezing temperatures with his score. It was awful. And it was a real come to Jesus moment for us because we realized if we're to be serious about music, we, had, we knew how to study, all right? You know, it, you can't get into college without at least doing some sort of studying, but we realized that we had to change our desire and willingness to study. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. The question of why do we study scripture and study in our faith journey? Because here's the thing. I could give you a real easy answer of a few easy methods to study, right? You know, there's tons of resources online. You can say, here's three easy ways you can read your scriptures and do your little devotional here and do this thing there. And that's all wonderful and that's all great. But if you're not willing to give your attention and your devotion to that, it won't matter what the style is. It won't matter how easy the process is. It won't matter because you won't do it. You don't have that internal will to do it. So this morning, I want to talk about three reasons why it's important for you and for me, and that studying is an important part of our faith journey as Christians. So number one, I want to lift up here, we study to learn. Right? We seek understanding. Just like we saw in the definition there earlier about um, what we're studying, the word study there, we, it's, we want to understand more. We want to learn. We want to grow. And so uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, I think really for me, summarizes this very well. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3. Here's Paul. He's telling us about the importance of Scripture. And he says this, All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for, for what? For teaching, for reproof for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. So one of the first reasons why it's important to study is because we want to learn. We want to be, this is useful for us. As Christians in the faith, it helps us. Whether we're kids in a Sunday school class or we're adults in a Bible study group or a small group study, we study the Bible to learn and to understand what the Bible says about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit, about the people of the Old and New Testaments and how they live their lives. People like Adam and Eve or Noah or David or Job or the disciples. We also learn knowledge. In Scripture, there's a deep, deep well of knowledge for us, whether it's learning about the golden rule we seek to live by or the Ten Commandments or the Sermon on the Mount or the wisdom of King Solomon and Proverbs or the beauty in the heart of the Psalms. We study the Scripture to expand our understanding in hopes to learn. So that's important. But that's not the only reason why it's important for us. I want to go to our second reason. Number two, we study to grow. Now, we call this, in spiritual terms, we call it spiritual formation, right? The ability for us to grow, to take what we've now learned, because we had to study first, we've got to study to learn it, and to use it to guide and shape our spiritual lives, not only today in this moment here and now, but for the future as well. And this is where I love Psalm 119, 105. It just, to me, it summarizes this growth so beautifully. It's, it's a very simple passage. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You ever hear that passage before? Yeah. But here's what I love about it. There's two parts to this. When we talk about learning to grow, we need that understanding of where we are now first. Your word is a light where? Unto my feet. 
So first, it illumines where we are here and now. So when we go into scriptures, when we study the word, it helps us understand where we are in the world and who we are as God's creations here and now in our lives. You all know that uh, our family has been enjoying camping. That's something we've been doing a lot of uh, when we get the chance to go out on a weekend. And I've learned, uh, I learned a lot of important lessons when I go out because this is still new to us. One of the important lessons I learned recently was the importance of having a lantern when camping. Our last campsite uh, did not have a sewage connection, and so we were trying not to use, you know, the showers and the bathrooms because, you know, you don't want to fill up your tanks and then be stuck. And so they have a public shower and a public restroom, but you got to walk to it, you know, and you're on a little island. This was over at Fort DeSoto, and it's kind of a little island. And I've got to tell you, when you're walking 9 or 9.30 at night in the dark on an island with critters, you want a lamp. You want a light to be able to look where you're walking to make sure you don't step on something that might step back at you or hurt you there. And so it applies that. The beauty of having that light when we talk about scriptures is that it helps us in the here and now. But that's not the only thing that scripture helps us in our growing. See, scripture helps us grow into the path before us. It is also a light unto my path. You see, where we are headed in our spiritual journeys, that light that illumines the path before us that allows us to seek to grow and to become more and more the person that God has created you and me to be in this life. And as I was thinking back to my high school and going into college with that music theory, the reality for me is I wasn't learning music theory just to know music theory. Okay, I wasn't studying, you know, chord progressions and key signatures and harmonizations and all that stuff just because that's cool knowledge. You know, I I realized I needed to pass the class. But at the same point, I was learning this music theory because it helped me grow into the person, into a life that I wanted to live. I wanted to live a life of music. I wanted to share my joy, my passion, my faith, what I enjoyed in music with others. In order to do that, I had to grow. And that's where it helped lead me in that moment. You see, what we learn, when we learn more about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we can grow closer into what God has created you and I to be. And we can grow to that place where things, what we call the fruit of the Spirit, you remember those? Yeah, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That those are not just words that we study, but it grows into a life that we live. And we model, we study to grow. Now third, when we talk about studying, we talk about studying in order to know. We study to know. In particular, we study to know God. God's revelation through the study of Scripture. John 1.1 just summarizes this so perfectly. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God, the single best place you can experience God is in Scripture. That's where we learn. In fact, as I was reading the the series that we're doing right now with Adam Hamilton, one of the the thoughts Adam was processing with, with us in the book was talking about how does God speak to us? How does God speak to us? And he talks about two different ways that God speaks or reveals God's self to us. And first, he talked about what was called general revelation. Right, general revelation. This is our efforts to learn more about God. How do we focus on learning more about God in our lives? And he talked about a couple ways we do that. And first of all, he talked about the beauty of nature. For some people, they experience God in the beauty of God's creation. God is creator of the universe. And we can experience God at moments when we can experience God's creation. There's a picture I want to show you here. This was from our, our last camping trip at uh, Fort DeSoto. And um, we had the, uh, 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 there will be a picture coming up on screen. Uh, There it is. This was our campsite at Fort DeSoto. And I've got to tell you, I I tend to be a very busy person just because I don't like to sit. I, I, you know, I've always got something I'm focusing on and what's next, what do I got to do? This was the first time for me, actually in a long while, that I actually sat and enjoyed the beauty of a sunset over the ocean. My daughter was there in the hammock, and Kim was over in one of the chairs, and just seeing the beauty. And there were actually dolphins playing in the water at the sunset. There was a mother dolphin, a little baby. They were kind of splashing around in the waters, and, um, you know, just enjoying that 
moment there. there. There was even the raccoon up in the tree near us, and he was kind of eyeing us, looking for handouts or something, I don't know. But we're experiencing God through nature, and many of you have done that, and you experience God through moments of nature. We can also experience God through the arts, through painting, through sculpting, through drawings, through music, right? Stand in the light. We can experience God, the Messiah, back for Easter. Y'all remember just before Easter when the choir and orchestra performed Messiah? I, one of my favorite quotes with music is, when words fail us, there is always music. And I love how music can, can illuminate to us just little moments of God in such beautiful ways. We can experience God through life experiences and other people in our lives. The way that we encounter people, how we see Jesus in others in our everyday walk. A couple weeks ago, I was sitting with a woman. She was actually my age, and uh, her husband died very suddenly, died of a heart attack, totally unexpected. And we sat, and we were talking about him and the life that they had together, and she was sharing these stories about him that really illuminated Jesus in him how he focused on love, how he was not only loving and caring to her for their years of marriage, but he was caring for his neighbors, for his friends at work, for his coworkers, people around him in his life. It didn't matter who it was. He was the hands and feet of Christ in those moments. And you can experience just a taste of God in those moments. Then there's special revelations. Special revelations is when God reached out to us, to you and to me. There's two ways that Adam talks about this. One of them he shares is talking about through the Holy Spirit, right? The work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we love to call those God moments. You ever heard the phrase God moments? That these are things that you experience at life that you can't explain, that you just don't know the answer. I'll never forget, this was some years ago, but one of our our dear choir members uh, had been diagnosed with pretty much a terminal illness. And they had told him, they said, we don't expect you to live. In fact, they were going to operate on him to see if there was anything they could do, but they didn't expect him to survive long. And after the operation, the doctors came to the family and said, we don't understand, but whatever it is we thought was there is gone. It was an unexplainable moment. Even the doctors were going, "I, I don't know. And we have sometimes these moments in our life, these God moments where God reveals God's self to us in such powerful ways. That still small voice from within us that brings that peace that passes all understanding. And then, of course, Scripture. God reveals God's self in Scripture. And I got to tell you, that this is a big aha moment for me because for me, I have to confess, when I think Scripture, I think study. I do, and I struggle with that because I struggle with studying. And what I've learned, come to learn is reading Scripture isn't just a time of study. It's a time of building a relationship between you and God. You see, when we study God, when we focus our, what are the two words? Devotion and attention. Good, you're paying attention. I like it. When we focus our devotion and attention in those moments, not just to know more facts and details about God, we study God in order to develop our relationship with God. And that's my invitation to you this morning. I'm not inviting you to a study session. You know, you can study, you can do those kind of things. I want to invite you to get to know God, to encounter the creator of the universe, who knows you, who loves you just the way you are, whether your life is going great and things are exciting and you couldn't be happier, or you can just barely get through today. So I want to take just a moment here in the close to just lift up a few of scriptural passages through the Psalms, God moments. Take this time, if you would, to be in attention, to focus our devotion to the God of Scripture. Psalm 3. O Lord, how many are my foes. Many are rising against me. Many are saying to me, there is no help for you in God, but you, O Lord, are a shield around me. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy hill. 
Psalm 16. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let the faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 30. Sing praises to the Lord, O you faithful ones. Give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is just but a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing and know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and know when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 146. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over strangers and upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever for you, O God of Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. God already knows everything about you. God's inviting you and me to get to know God. God is waiting for us to give our attention and, yes, our devotion. Not just our study, but our time our lives, and growing that relationship closer to him. And when we do that, you can reach that beautiful point in your life someday when then sings your soul that says, how great thou art. Let's pray. God, sometimes the days are a struggle. Whether we're just kind of walking through life blindly or our heart's not in it, We struggle with relationships, we struggle with work, we struggle with finances and health. Lord, sometimes that just all is so overwhelming. The thought of having to study can sometimes just cause us to stop. Remind us of the beauty of our relationship with you. That through our attention, that through our devotion and experiencing you through this world, through friendships, and through your word, we can grow closer to you and closer to that place where we can celebrate a soul that sings. We pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
guys sing pretty good. You might want to take a music theory class or two. I want to invite you this week, get to know God. Learn more about the Bible, okay? Crack it open for yourself. Join a class. Go to Jack's class. I don't care how you do it, but learn. Grow. Take what you learn and use it. Live the life of Jesus Christ every day. And know that God is there waiting for you every step of the way. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day.